I solve practical problems. I did all I could. Well, this was a disappointment. Yippee-ki-yah! How are you? Cheers, mate! Bloody hell! I feel like every bone in me pot is broke. For my primary weapon, I use the Frontier Justice. This beautiful pump-action shotgun can devastate most classes up close and personal. For my secondary weapon, I use the Wrangler, giving me the ability to manually control my sentry gun so I can pick off targets from a safe distance. And for my melee weapon, I use the Gunslinger. The mini sentry works in conjunction beautifully with this loadout's primary weapon, the Frontier Justice. The Frontier Justice works with my sentry gun to give me what are called quote unquote revenge crits. I get two revenge crits for every one kill my sentry gun made, and one revenge crit for every assist. I can see how many revenge crits my sentry gun has accumulated thus far in my HUD, short for Head Up Display or Status Bar, which is shown here. But I will not receive these revenge crits until the destruction of my sentry gun, either by myself or by the enemy team. It is also important to note that I must be alive at the time of its destruction, or I will lose any of the stored crits. The Frontier Justice is able to store up to 35 of these at one time, three in the magazine and 32 stored in reserve. But should I die, upon my death, I will lose any that I had remaining. I can see how many revenge crits I still have left, which is shown in my HUD here. The 100% guaranteed chance of a critical hit this weapon has upon receiving one or more revenge crits and in the right hands with the right aim basically transforms this ordinary shotgun into a literal force to be reckoned with. Each critical hit deals three times the base damage of the weapon which already does insane damage at close range, giving me the capacity to one-shot most classes in the game. Now, the downsides to using this amazing weapon are that it cannot randomly deal critical hits, and it has half the clip size as a normal stock shotgun, meaning I can only fire three shots before having to reload. Now this is an important drawback to take note of, as there have been many times when I would have benefited from having an additional round in the chamber as my aim is far from perfect. Something else to bear in mind when using this weapon is that the potential base damage the Frontier Justice is able to do significantly drops off at a distance because it is a pellet based weapon. As distance increases, the pellets spread out and the bullet spread is much, much more noticeable. This means if I'm close to my target, my shot will potentially deal more damage because more projectiles or pellets will make contact with my target's hitbox. This makes it an ideal primary weapon for close encounters such as defending my building from nearby enemies, checking suspicious players, and helping my low-level sentry gun finish off weakened enemies, just as Valve intended, but not ideal when fighting from a distance. As you can see in these gameplay clips, I do very little damage to 
for these targets at medium to long ranges. Now, this brings me to my secondary weapon, the Wrangler. I hesitate to recommend this as, in my opinion, it's not a suitable secondary weapon selection for any tryhard revenge near. Not when using the Frontier Justice, especially not in any sort of competitive gameplay. When you take into consideration the Frontier Justice's disadvantages in its small magazine size and significant damage fall off at distance, it just doesn't really make sense to not have a secondary sidearm. However, the reason I play video games is because they're fun, and the Wrangler is a lot of fun. It basically replaces the ordinary stock pistol with a 1980 style joystick controller that allows me to manually control my sentry gun. Upon doing so, it loses its auto aim and automatic firing capabilities, but gains a semi-transparent shield that absorbs 66% of all incoming damage and doubles its rate of fire at my current target. When switching to another weapon, the sentry gun will be rendered inoperative for 3 seconds within its shield, but after those 3 seconds have passed, it will resume its auto aim and automatic firing behavior. While equipped with the Wrangler, I am able to do what is called sentry jumping, and this can be done with a mini sentry gun. However, I find it much, much more effective when using the rockets of a leveled sentry gun. And as such, I do not use it very frequently with this loadout. However, sentry jumping can still be used with a compact mini sentry gun to reach some previously unreachable places, and this is perfect for setting up ambushes and thus worth mentioning. Now, this brings me to my melee weapon choice, the Gunslinger. The Gunslinger replaces my right hand with a very cool looking robotic hand. It also grants me an additional 25 health, bringing my total health to 150. Using the Gunslinger also allows me to build what is called the Combat Mini Sentry Gun instead of the Standard Sentry Gun. Taunting with the Gunslinger equipped will perform what is called the Organ Grinder Kill Taunt. The Revengeneer will pull out a ripcord rev it up to a vicious speed and thrust it forward into his victim. Upon contact, the taunt will stun its victim causing multiple one damage hits, and upon ripping his robotic appendage free, it will deal 500 damage instantly killing any class not invulnerable at the time. Now, as a melee weapon, the gunslinger cannot randomly deal critical hits, but Every third consecutive melee strike will result in an automatic critical hit, which can be extremely effective in close quarters as melee reigns supreme at this distance. It's also worth mentioning that the melee strikes do not have to be on the same target for the third strike to be a critical hit as long as they are consecutive strikes as any missed blow will reset the counter. The Combat Mini Sentry Gun is a smaller, more combat efficient version of the standard sentry. That costs less metal, can be built much quicker, locates and fires faster than its counterpart, at the expense of having less health and dealing less overall damage. The mini sentry gun costs only 100 metal and is constructed much faster than a standard sentry gun, allowing me to build more of them. It fires 50% faster and rotates at a 35% faster speed than a standard sentry gun, which is useful when dealing with those pesky scouts and rocket jumping soldiers. Hitting the combat mini sentry gun with my robotic fist will boost the construction speed, repair, or refill its ammo if needed, and if I have metal in my inventory, but will not be able to upgrade this sentry gun. It only has 100 health compared to a level 1 sentry gun's 150 health. Also, in first place, 
It only has 50 health and gains health during its build animation. This makes it extremely vulnerable during its construction. The mini sentry gun also does less damage, dealing only 50% of the damage per shot of the original level 1 sentry gun. The mini sentry gun, when destroyed, also does not leave behind any metal. Because of its low metal cost and fast build time, the combat mini sentry gun can be placed in the middle of combat, to my advantage. And this is extremely effective and has many different uses. I can use this to defend myself from a Demo Knight charge. It can help to finish off weakened opponents or distract them, allowing me and or my teammates to finish them off. Something that has helped me to improve my revenge mode gameplay dramatically is by learning how to build my combat mini sentry gun quickly through the use of a simple script or find command in the developer console. If you do not already know how to do this, I will quickly show you a simple method that I use. Ordinarily, to build a sentry gun, I need to open up my PDA in the construction menu by pressing 4 on my keyboard, selecting the sentry gun by pressing 1. I can rotate it by pressing the right mouse button key, and then placing it in my desired location by pressing the left mouse button key. In order to rebuild it, I would have to ordinarily open up my PDA in the deconstruction menu by pressing 5, selecting the sentry gun to be deconstructed by pressing 1, and then opening up my construction menu by pressing 4, selecting the sentry gun by pressing 1, and then placing a new sensory gun in my new desired location. Using the PDA to do this while in combat is somewhat of a tedious process, and my fingers are far from nimble, so I found a much more simple method that I will now show you. First, I open up my options, go to advanced options, make sure that the developer console is enabled by clicking here. Then, in game, I open up the developer console and type in the following Bind Base Quote in all caps locks Mouse 3 End quote Space Quote Destroy Space 2 Space 0 Semicolon Build Space 2 Space 0 End quote And then press enter now, in game, simply by pressing down on the scroll wheel of my mouse or middle mouse button key, my old sentry gun is instantly destroyed and my new combat mini sentry gun is ready to be placed at a click of a button. This is extremely useful in combat and has saved me numerous of times. And when I want to unbind that key, for example when I'm playing medic, in man vs machine and want to use the middle mouse button key to use my projectile shield, I simply go into my options and reassign the key. When I first started playing engineer, it was on 2 for long, long ago, and the enemy team was rolling this. Somebody typed in chat, somebody go ng, and being a faithful team player, I quickly switched classes. As the enemy team was basically at our front door, I got to work building my sentry gun. Once I was finished, I went off exploring, and as I was gone, a spy made short work of my level 3 sentry gun. I guess I got caught roaming. When I came back to find nothing but a little metal remaining, and one of my teammates taught me what I uh, heard Uncle Dane, the engine main, and other reputable engineers refer to as the art of turtling where you crouch behind your sentry gun with a dispenser at your back and you whack away with your trusty wrench. And so I did this until my finger was literally tired and I got bored and quickly switched to a different class. But when I play this loadout, it's suddenly brand new and exciting all over again. Instead of running into the fray with Mizelk-like ambition and screaming, Banny, I will make you so fucking proud, and probably dying almost immediately afterwards, 
I wait patiently for the right moment and try and pick and choose my targets. Mindful of my low health and role as a support class, but with the right timing and the right aim and those sweet, sweet revenge crits, I can sneak up behind my victims and decimate them. If you liked that video, please do give me a thumbs up as it takes some time on my part to make these videos. And also, if you have not already, please do consider subscribing as it will inspire me to make more videos in the future for you to hopefully enjoy. I'll see you next time. Peace.